So this is the general best team that most people are using. Wukong, Vivian, Bologna, and Bernard. Or Ray. Ray's a bit better, but doesn't really matter that much. I'm going to have a couple alternatives later for Bologna and Wukong in separate videos. You can check those out if you want them. There's definitely a lot more Wukong alternatives than the one I'm going to be uploading, but I can't build every single alternative. There's like 10. This video does start from RC8. If you want to see RC1 through 7, you can check the previous video. I will go over the stats again though in case anybody still needs them. For Wukong, either Rage or Destruction works. Whatever, whichever one gives you more damage. Rage has slightly reduced effectiveness in Rift, but it's not by a lot, <clears throat> so just see which one gives you more. Also, depending on your setup, you might want some bulk. Usually, people don't look for HP and death on Rage, so it could be hard for you to find bulk on Rage if you need it. Crit chance you do want 100%, the boss is not ice element, so you don't get elemental advantage, but I'm using a crit chance boosting artifact on my Bernard, so it's okay. Speed, either base speed or speed boots work, either one is fine, I'm using speed boots, but it probably doesn't matter too much. For two piece, crit chance or torrent are okay. If you're having an issue where you're using idle shear on your cleanser and it's pushing your Wukong past them, then you might want to use immunity set to block the venoms at the start of the fight. Artifact, I'm using Sacred Scythe so I can use the damage boosting device on row 1. Golden Rose would also work. If you don't have either of those, you might want to look into using a damage boosting artifact instead and the healing device on row 1. For Mola's, I only does S1 since these are primary DPS. And for S2, I actually don't know if you need this because I don't know if the boss has 35 or 50% crit chance, but the pen resistance is nice to make him take less damage. Next up is Vivian. For Vivian, S3 Mola is nice to make her S3 only 5 turns and she'll have attack buff up for the team more often. S2 isn't mandatory. Wukong is your primary DPS, so he's doing most of the damage. Vivian's damage does help though, and I already had this molded from Banshee 13 one shot anyways. EE, you want the S3 50% CR push EE so she cycles faster. And then for Artifact, I like Koaldra. Some people also use uh, Etika Scepter, but I don't like that one that much because it's pretty inconsistent. There's also Radiant Forever, which I just don't think is worth the resources. Rift isn't hard enough to warrant doing that anyways. Because uh, on my runs, I'm already one shotting. I was. I'm already one-shotting at RC8 and I was two-shotting at RC2, so it's it's fine. There's also Maximum Break Spirit's Breath, which is actually really good, but a little bit hard to get. For sets, you probably want Speed Set. Crit or Torrent, both work fine. You want her to be pretty fast so she cycles, but not too fast because you, your, uh, your cleanser needs to go first. Aside from that, the usual 100% crit chance and the rest of the stats into attack and crit damage. And then there's Bologna, S2, CD, EE, so that she only has two turns on it and she can use it every other turn. I'm using Bloodstone because my Bernard is really bad. Aside from that, you could also use Iron Fan or Damage Boosting uh, Artifact. So starting from RC8, the speed actually doesn't really matter anymore. I, would, I previously had it slower on RC2, so she would move after the boss, but with the Warrior debuff extension device, you can make Bologna faster and it's okay. You need 105 effectiveness to land Death Break. I have uh, the Bernard Artifact also boosts effectiveness, so 95 is good enough for me. There is also one thing to consider, which is starting from, depending on what your gear level is, somewhere in between RC8 and 15, and pretty much guaranteed at RC15, you don't need Death Break to one-shot anymore. So you could drop all of her effectiveness for, uh, for just damage if you wanted to. And then for her skill ups, I'm all at S3 for the death break at first, and like I mentioned, it does eventually get to the point where you don't need death break, so if you're trying to save on molas, you could just skip all of her molas or disgrace her and then take her out later. Last up is Bernard. I only enhance his S3 to give him 3 turn and have immunity up more often. 3 turns on his S3 actually does end up working out nicely with Vivian where they always have one of them always has immunity up at all times. Artifact is just some random stat boosting artifact. You could use this, you could use Idol's Cheer, you could use a healing artifact if you really need it. Aside from that, he just wants to be fast enough to move b before Vivian at the start of the fight. And then ideally you would have immunity set because that way he blocks the two venoms at the start of the fight. 
but it doesn't really matter that much. Oh yeah, also I recorded the RC8 run on my phone and I guess my YouTube started playing in the background. So there's going to be music overlapped on top of that one. I will have the song in the description since I actually do know what it is. So for devices, we're using the AoE damage increase device since it's the biggest damage boost available. We have Sigurds on Brukong and Bloodstone on Bologna to help us with sustain. If you're not using those, you probably want to use the Warrior Healing device instead. We do get to pick up one new device on this level, which is going to be the Warrior Debuff Extension device. This makes it so we can permanently extend the Death Break after the first one lands, and also Severs will get extended as well. So as early as RC8, we're actually able to just one-shot the boss. It does need us to land Death Break at the start though, because Bologna landed Death Break at the start of this run and we just barely one-shot it at the end with our final turn. You can see though, thanks to the new Warrior device, we're able to permanently maintain Death Break due to Wukong's attacks after Bologna lands the first Death Break. I think that you can just one-shot it without any Death Break at this level if you have good gears, because Death Break's damage increase isn't actually as significant than Rift. But you're gonna need much better gears than whatever I'm using for that. Okay, so going into RC15, we get a massive damage buff, and at this point, it should be pretty much trivial for you to one shot Rift. Uh, now, Warriors, or rather Wukong, if he's in the front row, deals extra damage depending on the amount of debuffs inflicted. This is 10% per debuff, so once you hit the debuff cap, that's gonna be 100% extra damage. The debuff extension device that we get. On the second row makes it pretty easy to maintain most of the severs and keep the death break going though at this point if you have i would say decent gear you pretty much don't even need death break anymore i'm gonna show what it is with the original comp to see how many turns i have left and then i'm gonna regear bologna so she doesn't have effectiveness for a future run we'll try to do one without death break and see how that goes Kundan <laughs> 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 <laughs>
So that was a pretty clean one shot. We had five Rift Counterforce left, so we probably could have taken out like three or four more bars of HP if we needed to. This means that with a lot worse gear, if you land Death Break at the start, you sh you'd be able to one shot this. And thanks to the debuff extension device, once you land Death Break at the start, it would stay the whole fight. Aside from that, I'm going to take a look and see if we can one shot Rift without any Death Breaks now. Okay, so I don't feel like sitting there and waiting until Bologna misses her death breaks us off of 15%. So I lowered her effectiveness to as low as it can go. Though unfortunately, due to this account's gear, this was the only way I could really do it. We ended up losing a ton of damage, but hopefully all the damage from the new device will make up for it. Okay, so that was also a one shot. A little bit close, but do keep in mind I absolutely gutted my Bologna's damage while swapping through this build. And also, her S2 isn't mole at all, and S3 was only molded for max death break chance. So there's definitely a lot of room for improvement. Other people's gear too, my Wukong's gear isn't fantastic either. But based off of that, if you have some decent level of gear, once you hit RC15, you should be able to one shot Rift consistently. 100% because even if you miss death break you'll still be able to kill. Also this means that if you want you could just drop all the FF off of your Bologna 
and just all invested all into damage instead. So this team was already one-shotting at RC15 with no death break. How are we even going to improve on that? Well, at RC21 we get this device, which makes it so that if you have no Soul Weaver, your entire team gets immunity for the whole fight. This lets us drop Bernard since we were only really using him for cleansing and immunity in the first place. We can also swap the row 1 device over to the warrior healing artifact, and we can actually do more than just drop Bernard. We can drop every single member from this team except for Wukong, and he'll be able to solo clear the fight. We can also swap his artifact from a healing one to a damage one. If you don't have this, Symbol of Unity is also a good choice. And if you're struggling to stay sustained up, or to tank rather, during the fight, Victorious Flag is a good one too. Also, since we're not, we don't have the pizza artifact on Bernard coming in anymore, you do want 100% crit chance. I cannot be bothered to re-gear for that. We're just going to send it. So that was pretty easy. We did have 10 turns left, which means that you could one shot at RC21 with much less damage on your Wukong. You could swap him over to a PvP build at this point and use him in both PvE and PvP. One thing though is that you do get the 50% HP from injury at some point during the fight, so you'll need to make sure that you have enough HP to not just randomly die to something at some point. So this team definitely is the strongest overall team. Two shotting at RC2, one shotting at RC8, and 100% one shotting at RC15 is a really nice pace to follow, especially with how annoying the old rift was. It does all stop mattering once you hit RC21 if you have Wukong, because he's just going to solo the whole thing himself. That's about it for this team though, good luck with the gear rolling.